Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash horror junkies podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. All right, guys, the long and waited episode three of Horror Junkies. Finally. Boom. Hey, we're hey. Back. We're back. Hey. Uh, so, how was everyone's Hurricane Matthew adventure? It was great. I got drunk by myself. <laughs> I, got, was, I got drunk with my family. Yeah, so. it was great. I got drunk with uh, my girlfriend's family. I did not get drunk. <laughs> Shocker. Wow. And I ate a lot of food because it was like... I did that too. Yeah. I just I played Risk and ate a lot of food. Yeah. So. Rest in peace and, uh, you know, hopefully everyone gets through that who was damaged through the hurricane. Oh, yeah. I, I want to say that Haiti was the one who got hurt, hit the worst. Oh, yeah. I mean, Bad. they have like... Their numbers are up to a thousand casualties now. Like, it's, it's pretty bad there. So, if you have anything you can do to donate to people of Haiti... Um, Please try to give that a look up because, you know, they're in real need of support and need. Um, but today's episode, we got a whole bunch of stuff planned out. I think we're going to talk about the evil dead finally. Mm. The evil dude. Mm. Ash, Ash versus ass. <laughs> <laughs> the title of episode two from the new season. <laughs> that was great. Is that the official title? For no. Me? Oh, that's yeah, a uh, morgue. I made it up. <laughs> you made it up. It just needs Had to be the fooled. freaking title for the episode. That'd be great. <laughs> you guys need to see it. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to watch it later on tonight. Um, but to get things going, you know, it is a new week. It's actually our first show for October. So, woo! Best Happy. month of the year. It is the best month of the year. Even though someone just caused a ghost to pop something. It was weird. Mm. I don't know what's going on. I think it was awesome. Mm. But um, we're all huge. Halloween fans, so this month is probably the best month of the year. I, to me, it is. I love Same. October. Weather's changing. It's mm. Florida, so it's still super hot, but it's not like extremely hot. So the weather's amazing so far. It's bearable. Yeah. It's bearable. <laughs> it's yeah. you can go outside and kind of not die. Yeah, exactly. But um, speaking of which, uh, is there anything like happening this week, Angel, that you were able to figure out and come up with and things since oh. you had we had such a long break? There is, uh, for those of you who've seen Wolf Creek, they are getting a revamped uh, TV series, and it's going to be coming out this Friday. Um, really? Wolf Friday? Creek yeah. TV oh, series. I have, what, where is it coming out on? It's like, on what? Pop TV. I've never personally heard of that K- channel, but it's on Pop TV. So Pop I mean, TV. Pop. Never heard of it. Yeah, I, so I haven't like, either. It's nope. the first time. And I, it's weird. Like, there's like no huge like I've I've literally haven't heard anything about this TV series until Angel told us about it 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I mean it's it's straight I off mean, the movie. It takes place, I guess, where uh, Wolf Creek Two left off. I didn't get a chance to see Wolf Creek Two. So it's but, not a like a revamp series. It's like following the movie. Yeah, it's like following the uh, the guy. His name's Mick Taylor, I Mick. believe. That's the character name. Mick like, Taylor, the killer, Mick. and um, it's gonna be following a. Uh, teenage girl and a, her family um, they get murdered in on vacation and course, she wants to give revenge terrible. so she takes it out sets out to put them behind bars well huh. I'm actually kind of interested about that I'm have to get pop TV to, on my TV yeah exactly because <laughs> I want to I want to watch that I want to know what channel that's on like <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like one of those like um like online website, like website video. Like, that is true. I think I did because yeah, it's yeah. something like a Netflix or like a um, Amazon TV, some shit like that. Yeah. Um. But no, I'm stoked. You know, Wolf Creek was a pretty decent movie. Um, if I can remember, I haven't seen Wolf Creek in forever. Dude, it came out in 2005. So yeah. Like it's it's been a while since I've watched Wolf Creek. I think I've only seen it once. I never seen it. You've, You've never, never seen, seen it. it? Wow. Yeah. No. It, it's Patrick's of, never seen it. It's one of those. You get lost in like off the road. I want to say is the type of movie, and yeah. like they're in like a like a more rural area. So it's like like wrong turn. Yes, yeah, same concept. Same okay. concept. Australia with kangaroos. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. kangaroos. Kangaroos. Hell yeah. So, um, what about some history today, Mike? Dude, we always start off with we some history. Got some cool history for the people of the show. So. Last week on October 7th was the anniversary of Edgar Allan Poe's death. He actually left us in 1849, October 7th. That was a really loud noise coming from the world of the dead. (laughs) The evil Um, dead. That was Edgar himself. So, yeah, that was him giving us props for talking about (laughs) him. 
But um, you so know, you rang. if for those who don't know too much about Edgar Allan Poe, is um, he's one of the more influential writers. Uh, short, of short stories, poems. I mean, things such as Annabelle Lee, uh, The Raven, uh, The Telltale Heart. I mean, these are just like a few of the numerous works that this man's created. And what's really cool about Poe is that, you know, a lot of his inspiration pulled from the tragedies in his life. So his parents were actors. And eventually his father left, like abandoned his family, and his mom was there to uh, raise him, his older brother, and his uh, infant uh, uh, sister, excuse me. And eventually they both die of um, tuberculosis. Mm. Um, So he uses these, like, tragedies in his life, because his life is always full of tragedies, because he had the worst fucking luck out of everyone in the world, probably. It seems that way. I mean, not to... I mean, he was crippled with depression. He was an alcoholic. I'm pretty sure he had some sort of substance abuse. They're not 100% sure. Because uh, there's like, I mean, his death was, unquote, mysterious. But for the most part, the people who knew him and the people who talked about him, the discourse of Poe knew that he was an alcoholic. So, I mean, it could have been like a lot of things. And just the name of a few of the theories, uh, there was one that said in 1857 that he was beaten to death. Uh, Maybe he was suffering from some sort of toxic disorder or hypoglycemia. Uh, since he was an alcoholic, there was one 1947 alcohol dehydro, uh, dehydrogenase, which I, from studies, I feel like it's, um, that's talking about like, uh, something with alcohol levels pertaining to water levels in the body. Like right, just his, his, so his, his pH. Just, yeah, yeah. He, he was always, <laughs> but I mean hammered. like, that's the thing, like no one truly knows. Cause mm. like he, when they found him, he was in and out of consciousness in the hospital. And then he he uttered like okay. a little prayer before he died, and he just died. And just it was just like they were like, "What the fuck?" Well, it's probably messed up for me to say this, but all his misfortunes and stuff in life brought on like, Great I mean, work. like we're still reading his stuff today and still watching his movie, like you know the movies, and they just made the Raven in like 2011 or something. Oh yeah, the that, movie. that was actually a really good movie. It wasn't bad. It wasn't and, like, bad. His misfortunes made some of the best stories. I mean, he's like the Godfather of horror. He literally was like the first one to really. You know, put out something that was truly scary. Yeah, no, especially for that time. I yeah, mean, well, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're talking about the 1800s. So I mean, that's that's late night, mid 19th century. Uh, whoa. I mean, people in the 70s thought that like rock music was the devil. Yeah, and, and the so, thing about I mean, this time, you're 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 reading books like let's see, like the Telltale Heart, which is one like one of my favorite ones next to, next to uh, the Raven, which is there's this unnamed narrator in this short story. And he's trying to convince the readers of his sanity, all while he's talking about how he murdered this person. That's that's also my favorite one as well. Right? Yeah, like he's, he's trying to convince the reader that he's not crazy when he clearly is. He's not absolutely insane. He's not sane at all. Um, Patrick, you got any Poe favorites? Oh, the Raven. The Raven. Yeah, Raven. I think. I mean, that's the only one I read. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, Angel. Wow. I always, I always like mispronounces the cask of Montiallo. That's that's my other favorite. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a hard. really good that, that's a really good story. Yeah. Um but you know, it's just it's shocking, you know, because you wonder like if he didn't die so young, what else he could have created? Like well, we had like, he died, more. you know, I want to say was like what 40? if he wrote movies? It's like forty years old. He died, but like think about like the other works that were not even written. That yeah, could have I mean, been. He could have written for written for I mean twenty thirty more years. We could have had so much more movies and stories and stuff to tell and read. He oh. could have been our Alfred Hitchcock. How he old was he when he, he died? I think forty. He was born in eighteen oh nine. Died in eighteen forty nine. Uh, eighteen forty nine. So I, yeah, that's forty years. Yeah, he's forty years old. That's still young. So young, that is. Yeah. Young. I, mean, I mean, for that, that for that time, yeah, that exactly. Like, you're like an eighty year old man, but still, yeah. <laughs> um. But no, like I said, like you brought up the movie, and what I loved about that movie with the Ravens, first off, the actor is amazing. I can't remember the name, name of his. John Cusack. John Cusack. Yeah. Nice. He's a great actor. Um, but I love the fact that they brought like some of his w- most famous stories to like r- the real world. Like the beginning, you have the guy who's on the freaking table, and they have the f- pendulum yeah. mm-hmm. swinging, and yeah. it fucking inviscerates him. Like yep. that's so sweet. Like you get to see his short story brought to life mm-hmm. was I really well, like that also uh bush gardens tampa hollow scream i think it was two or three years ago they one of their haunted houses was an edgar Allan poe house really i don't yeah. know if any of you guys went through that no i never go to hollow scream yeah i went to hollow scream um 
I don't even remember why. It was a couple years ago, obviously. It's cheap. Um, yeah, it's cheaper. Um, <laughs> and the house was amazing. You kind of you literally go through all of his famous stories. Uh, I mean, that's really cool. Yeah, it was cool. Didn't I think they also did that at in Holland Hornets, Hornets, right? Did they really? Yeah, did they? they did. I if we're wrong, leave a comment you're... below. Yeah, yeah. If we're wrong, please tell us because <laughs> let us know. I don't know. Inform us. I went to Hollow Scream and saw it. I didn't know they did it here. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure awesome. we had it in Al Capone, uh, Holland Hornets house. That's actually really fucking well, cool. They should Say do Al it Capone. again. Al Capone. <laughs> Al Capone. <laughs> Al Capone. <laughs> Al Capone. <laughs> um, Another cool thing that happened on today, which is October 12th, was that, you know, Puppet Master was released. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Ayo. Yeah, I like that movie. That's a great movie. Um, but that's, you know, I, w- I would sit here. I could literally do a whole show on Poe, but I'm not going to put anyone through that. And if you do want to have a conversation about Edgar Allan Poe, please hit me up, hit us up on Twitter. Please Because uh, I'll talk to you about Poe all day long. I mean, we could talk about his stories the whole episode. Oh, yeah. We yeah. Can, I mean, we can have literal impact. discussions about you know what he's trying to say in some of his stories and get a little bit deeper into the words and context if you want to so as like i said if you're a literature buff i'm not a huge lit buff but i have i've read enough to understand his work and if you want to talk more about it hit us up because i will definitely talk to you about it uh moving on from that the evil dead dude the long and waited Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. There we the go. Evil the Evil Dead. Dead talk. You know, they're actually, they just announced that they're going in season three now. Yep. Yeah. Already. Right. Versus Evil season Dead. two just started, what, two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're already announcing season three? Yeah, that's, really what, excited. I, that's what happened with the first season. Right when it came out, they were like, we're doing season People two. People are watching it, man. Yeah. Bruce it's Campbell wants sh- to do seven seasons. Thank you, Bruce Campbell. Yes. Bruce Campbell, <laughs> if you're listening to this, you are amazing. <laughs> we will, I want to touch your hand. We will watch seven seasons of this because it's it's... Beyond great, it's it's capturing what the movies were, and still being like new. It's still no, new. exactly, it's still and still new, shocking yeah. me. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. let, let's go in order. Let's go in order. Let's so talk about. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start about talk about the Evil Dead to the first one. Army of Darkness, and then the remake. The, the remake. Evil Dead. Let's talk about it all. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about it all. So, who wants to start this? Who's got what to say? Uh, come on, Pad. Okay, so the first movie. What do you have to say about the Evil Dead? The first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My least favorite out of the four is the first one, of course. Really? Oh yeah, I'm a. I like the second and Army of Darkness the most. Well, why? What about the first one? Don't you like? Well, I mean, you like it, but why yeah, is it the it's least? just my least favorite. It just in the comparison of the second movie and uh, Army of Darkness, I feel like the second movie and Army of Darkness knew what they were going for. And Evil mm. Dead. And Evil Dead was kind of like testing it out and see what they wanted to do with that franchise. Okay. okay. Yeah, because they didn't originally plan on it actually being as campy as it was. Yeah, no. The, no, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, Evil Dead 2, they Dude, just kind of went for it. Like, yeah. no, And, and it, it works. It worked. Uh, I love the Evil Dead. Like The evil, the, the original is one of my favorites. Um, I love the original. Yeah, I, I love mm-hmm. it. the gore. I mean, they, oh, yeah. it, with everything with me, it's like... Like, you just see people get blown off. I mean, like, for the, he cuts his freaking girlfriend's head off That's, in the garage. I mean, it's just like... In the shit. <laughs> yeah. But... And then, you know, but then you get Evil Dead 2, where it gets more into, like, I don't know, even a more weirder stance on things. Because oh, that yeah. was the one where they actually had the little ashes that tie them up, right? That was Army of Darkness. That's, yeah. You're right. Army <laughs> of Darkness. <laughs> Shit. But, um, but no, I, I feel like even with the stages of the movies, things got a little bit weirder, but it got progressively, like, more... The word I'm thinking of is escaping me, but, like... Like more put together, yeah. Think? Like more put together, more uh, like more professional. But it was professional because like even were... the acting itself got somewhat better right, oh, yeah. right. over the course of the years that those movies were made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the I don't know the first one because I didn't see I didn't see Evil Dead until late in my horror career, like career, like I have a career. Mm-hmm. My like my interest in the horror movies, um, and like I saw it and I was like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And then, like, when you watch it, like, a second or third time, like, wow, this is, like, the best thing I've ever seen. Because it's just, like, it's, like, so... It's fun. It's so fun and bad and awesome at the same (laughs) time and so gory and it's... I don't know. The first one... I think I like the first one. Like, this movie shouldn't work and it shouldn't be good, but it it has a charm to it. Yeah, it's... Especially you, with the first one, with the claymation have, and stuff like that. You, when you, you have a narcissistic movies. character that just yeah. really <laughs> fucking loves himself, like <laughs> it's perfect. It's it's hilarious. And we, even you, the video game was fun. If you're a horror fan, you have to like Evil Dead, or at least appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, 
it was I don't know like Angel finish this sentence I don't know it's <laughs> what do you think about it what do you think about it what do yeah. I think about it um honestly I think it's a very unique zombie movie slash like demonic film I mean yeah the bad like, I mean the the, the dead yeah the deadites are like zombie slash possessed slash I mean they're like they're, my, they're crazy they're strong here, and they're like here's they're my like, question they, they mentally can fuck with you which is I like that yeah from watching the you know uh evil dead versus ash versus evil dead i've been noticing that like the deadite the one uh the that keeps possessing the people in the show keeps referring to that you're never going to escape from us ash so my question is is the are the deadites different in every person or is it the same demonic being that's coming in possessing these people that was like I one question the same, they're, they're, they're different the demons in the book are they yeah yeah okay because like, like, like in it's the same i felt i mean that's how it that gives off that feel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. In season one when Ash... Uh, it's been out for a long time, so it's... Not a lot of people have stars. <laughs> True. <laughs> mm. um, but when he summons that demon to ask, like, how we get rid of the other demon, like, that was a separate demon from the movies. Yes. Yeah. So it's it, it's a book full of demons. Yeah, the, and I understand, that's why I'm not sure, but, like, think about the evil dead when he reads from the Necronomicon. Right. Are... Are the deadites that come from that movie, from Evil Dead Two, from Army of Darkness, right? The are same, they all the same deadite, like the same, the same entity? evil force, yeah, mm. the same force? Or is it multiple deadites possessing? I think it's multiple deadites. Yeah, I think that that is, and that's what they set yeah, in the rules sure. of the universe in that on, really? in the Ash right. universe. All right, cool. Yeah. And then, like I said, if if we're wrong, please hit us, like let us know because leave it, a comment below. Leave, leave, let us know. Angel, what are you saying, man? Um, I'm pretty sure it's on like a uh, like its own timeline, pretty much. I mean, like it's like, e- like kind of like eternal. So it's just people that go to hell become deadites, right? In this universe, so I oh, feel like they okay. are individual. Mm. So they got their own little like personalities and swagger to them. It's like mm-hmm. okay, yeah. They all normally have like the same kind of voice. It's like, like the same yeah. idea, yeah, exactly. Well, but they do, and especially in the um, the season, you can tell the voice. Is the same, but it's like a different voice. Like, you know, I mean, you have like the elements of the possessor, possessed person's yeah. voice underneath the possessor's voice. Yeah, yeah. So it's a mix between both, which yeah. So it's cool because you can tell. Okay, this person's obviously possessed if you weren't looking at their messed up face, but mm-hmm. like each one sounds a little different. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So wait, let's talk about the remake have, now. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Okay, I was just gonna say. Did any of you guys play the Evil Dead game? Yeah, I, I haven't. I never not. played it. The one for the Xbox? Yeah. Yeah, that was I, fun. I just it was just like a straight like arcade like bloodbath game. I, wait, yeah. like, hold on. I, mean, what else I did play it. So cool. <laughs> you just, yeah, you had like I, a little midget zombie with you. Yes, I now now I remember it's kicking to me. I, I wait, played. Can it. I say midget? Short person. Sorry. There you go. That's okay. That's um. Yeah. Uh, well, like, but you know, we can't leave out Army of Darkness because that was the most ridiculous one. That was. Insane. I agree. Like the fucking fact he was like, "This is my boomstick." Was like <laughs> that fucking killed me. I was like, "Damn you, Ash!" I think that's the one that made the series more iconic. Because even when Evil it made Evil Dead Two came iconic, out, not right. a lot of people saw it. Yeah, but a lot of people did go see Army of Darkness. That did, I don't know. I will, I'll, I'll be with you. That that one is probably what made the Evil Dead like. A cult. Yeah, it's a cult because yeah. it, that one was just so amazing, like, so dumb and so funny and so, like, yeah. gory and so evil dead, but, like, wrapped into this crazy movie. But, yeah, it, it made it into what it what it is now. So, about... Uh, the I mean, remake. I mean, well, I want to say Ash vs. Evil's Dead first. They're already on their third... They said they're going to make a third season. <laughs> Sorry, me and Patrick are having sweet nothings and you're Secret distracting Austin. Secret yeah, Secret sorry. Like, what the hell? Are you I'm doing? sorry. Do you continue? Um, we'll I'll write the we'll write the love notes. <laughs> 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 I mean, as for Evil's Dead, like they already said they're gonna make the third one, correct? The third season, so people are watching it. Like, I mean, that, I mean, I think that's so cool to me that there's something out here like a horror series that's not like American Horror Story. That's like a continuation of something that's so big in the horror genre. Mm-hmm. And they're bringing it back. So there's people who there's a good chance have never seen Evil Dead but enjoy this show. And there's also people who love the Evil Dead that are enjoying this. Like you're bringing young people and older fans all into one through the series. Correct. Oh shit. What time is it? It's Patrick's rant time. Oh, what? 
That was Fuck the, it. That was the most ridiculous intro ever. <laughs> what are you what are you gonna rant about today, Pat? CGI. Since we're talking about the calities of this movie, I'm gonna rant about CGI. <laughs> You're gonna rant about CGI. Oh boy. I gotta wait for my intro. Okay, cool. <laughs> Pets lost his mind, but no, I, nice. I I think it's a good segue into like we're talking about Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two Army in the TV show. CGI is a really important factor into this. Yeah, and let me hear what you have to say, Joe. And it's good in, in the show. It's good that it, they're using both. Like it's fine that CGI yes. exists, but don't let that be your monster. Don't let that be the thing that you use. Use practical effects. There's a nice balance in yes. the show. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. for sure, for sure. Yes, it's are cheesy, you, are you and mad yes, it's. That they brought in CGI at all. Like, wouldn't it be? At cool? first, I wanted to hate it, but it 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 brought in a more of a charm for the show for me. Yeah. Okay. Where it because they still had practical effects. Yeah, they're they still, still a use lot puppets. They still really, use really good ones. Too. Yeah. Well, they're still using like the same techniques from the original movies, like. Yeah, like yeah, I don't they, know. They're stick. They're sticking true to the their uh, the evil their roots. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the second episode in the second spoilers. Season, no spoiler alert. No, no spoilers. Oh, okay. okay, but um, the bodies that they use in the morgue scene mm-hmm. look so realistic. Oh yeah, they're probably real. Who knows? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not, it's not uncommon. Episode for, two is crazy. Everyone go see it. It's not uncommon for them to like maybe get uh, Clarence to go into a Morgan film and they have. You know, dead bodies there. I mean, they're dead, so honestly, what rights do they have? Yeah. None. <laughs> I, got, I got a question, though, since you're talking about CGI. Mm-hmm. What is your take on CGI in the horror genre or in movies in, like, in general? Like, Because obviously, it's necessary to have a lot of the movies that we have today. Like, If you look at like huge hits like The Avengers, the yeah. reason why those are so big is because they can make it look how it does. But, but that's, that's the CGI. thing. You, 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 for Avengers, it makes sense because you can't film that some of the scenes that they do in CGI right. that doesn't exist you can't make that uh-huh. with horror there shouldn't be excuse you sh- we there's been history that showed us that we can do the impossible with practicality exactly and yeah. make these monsters and make everything so you but when you like use CGI, CGI it seems lazy and it, it doesn't scare me anymore because I could tell it's CGI Ex- yeah because and you don't get a performance from the actors because they're exactly. acting in front of a fucking green screen green screen and in front of a Tennis ball. One yeah. of my biggest pet peeves is when I see a movie that has CGI when they don't properly motion track the effect. Oh, is what yeah. When it's really really gets, goofy. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like you see it, it's like kind of shaking and twitchy. <laughs> right. It's like Just like, I know this isn't a horror, but did you guys all see The Hobbit, The Battle of Five Armies? Yeah. yeah. Okay, remember, the, if you've seen this movie, I don't care, spoiler alert, whatever. It's not a real big scene. But in the towards the end where they're battling, they have uh, one of the dwarf's cousins come in. He's riding the pig. Okay, the, yeah, you yeah. guys remember yeah, that scene? Yeah. yeah, dude, that was the worst CGI I've ever seen in my life. You can All literally just movies. be like, "That is completely fake." Yeah, like they didn't even try. The even CGI with Lord of the Rings, that the first three films were great, They're amazing. It was because it was real. All the it Hobbit, was all the Hobbit real sets. CGI, like all the orcs and stuff. Yeah, all that was, pissed me off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the exception of like the full army scenes, but I don't know, man. Like, yeah, no, but like no, like, like you said, like. C- you don't get the full potential of the actor when they're acting in front of a green potato. Yeah. Yeah. It's and they're not just like the same. here, this well, this is gonna be the monster, so act terrified. You're not gonna get a real thing like a nut like a cool practical uh like short film was the Birch that was just released on like Crypt T V. It's like a four minute little short film and it like whoever created the Birch as a character and the makeup artist and the FX art, like, holy shit. Like that was a terrifying makeup. Like okay. that. Like I watched, it, I was like, okay, this is actually pretty scary. Well, I got something to say that goes with that. Like how you're saying, it's hard to get a real reaction from an actor mm-hmm. uh, when they're not, you know, acting in front of a monster. Um, I read, or no, it wasn't even. I can't. Yeah, I think it was just like behind the scenes on uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. I have the DVD here. Yeah. Kelly Rowland, who is not you know, known as being an actor, she was in Destiny's Child or whatever, she said she was terrified her whole life of um, Jason Voorhees, like Friday the 13th movie, mm-hmm. scared her to death. And so on the set, she would literally just, like not go anywhere around the actor when he was in his Jason outfit. <laughs> That's so, funny. So she said on screen, like she found it easiest to act, like like run from him because she was truly terrified. And like that goes exactly with like how CGI is. If you would have CGI Jason in there. There would have been rides would. in the street. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, she is not even known for being 
an actor. Like I said, she like she didn't do terrible in that movie. Yeah. But like for, especially for someone like who's not known as being an actor to act in front of a green screen, we probably would have got a terrible, terrible performance. Yeah. So no, I totally agree. It, Speaking so. of Freddy versus Jason, um, the comic book. Oh, Ash, 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 uh, yeah, Freddy, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Ash. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. I would have. I would have loved to see that in an actual motion picture, like as the second film. Yes. And just throw Ash in the mix. That's what you did. Like. That's what you should have done for the like post credit scene. I'm sorry, was, but he would have got his ass whooped. Read the comic. Mm. Yeah, if you I'll haven't read the, read the comic, comic, read the comic. It's funny. Dude, it. it's so great. Oh my god, yes. Ash is the hefe man, he dude. He's a hefe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but getting back to the CGI though, if like, like you said, like in the TV show series, they do a good blend of practical effects and CGI. Yeah, I mean, even like like Jurassic Park. Exactly. What I, what I'll do, like what I can say is that one of the things I love the most out of the series in that first season was that demon they actually summoned from the book. Yeah, like that was actually a really cool concept. How he was kind of like he was fading like in, he was like glitching, fading yeah. in and out of like. And again, that was good practical effects mixed with CGI because they exactly. had to use a computer to make that effect. Right, yeah. but it, but his like mouth and his whole body was all practical, but his body was like glitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was that really was cool. Really I cool really liked. I was like, that is fucking awesome. It, it kind of reminded me of like that digital glitchy monster from VHS. Yeah, in the woods, there's mm, like a yeah. glitching. A like, mix of him and like a, the Cenobite from Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, I got that exact, feel from it too. Yeah, yeah like, that was a great monster, great demon. Yeah, and this is why I'm hoping that Ash vs Evil did does. It shows that. In the horror genre, in the like us as fans want more practical effects again. We want monsters. And bring we'll back the it. monsters. Hashtag bring back yes. the monsters. Ha- yeah, fucking hashtag we'll watch bring it. back the monsters. Well, like I said earlier, like I I just love the fact that like I'm a big fan of anything that does this. Like I mean, for an example, Pokemon Go just did it worldwide. There's kids out there catching Pokemon on Pokemon Go who've never seen the Pokemon that they're catching because they're the original Pokemon and the TV series that they're watching is new 2014 pokemon right so there's there's people our age who played these pokemon games growing up catching these pokemon and there's children now in love with it um and that's what evil dead is doing um yeah like it's bringing people who've probably never seen evil dead or a lot of them who haven't and they're watching this new horror genre show and they're loving it and it's also bringing back people like us who, who love the Evil Dead. Love the franchise. And now they get to see it. So it's bringing these two people together, which then grows the horror franchise, which obviously we're all about. And that's what we're trying to do here. On exactly. Podcast. I love Bruce Campbell. Like, yes. He's like one of my him. favorite actors. Yep. I like uh, the... Forget, forgive me, I don't know his the actor's name. The dude, uh, he plays a Spanish guy in the show. I don't know his name. Yeah, I don't know his actual actor. He's name. good. This yeah. season, he's been... Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I've not, I don't. Great. Not familiar he's like the as Pedro. He's, he brings in a lot of comedy. Yeah, yeah, he does. Well, they all they nerdy, all do. Even <laughs> even Ash's dad. Like mm. it's awesome. I I'm enjoying Spoiler this season. Alert. I am enjoying this season very much. Um, mm. I'm excited to fin- uh, wait for it to be done and see season three. But with that, let's talk about the Evil Dead remake. But before but we before do that. that a well, quick message from our sponsors. So, for you listeners of, of Horror Junkies, uh, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Personally, on this podcast, we uh, an audiobook of our choice is available at audible.com. Um, one of the ones we love, uh, Austin's been reading it, he just written saw the movie, is The Girl on the Train, a novel. Um, so it's great. It's great. So, like I said, to download your free audiobook today, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash horror junkies podcast. And again, that is audibletrial.com forward slash horror junkies podcast for your free audiobook. That's right. Do it. Do it. Get your free book. All right. So, what are we going to say, Patrick? Okay. Now we talk about the remake. Now we talk about remake. <laughs> I love the remake, actually. I, I like it. it. Dude, I did enjoy Fuck it. Fuck yes. Yeah. There's not one thing I didn't like about that movie. No. A lot more morbid. A lot more. Well, that's what he wanted. Like yeah, when, yeah, when, it, when this movie dark. got announced, Bruce Campbell was like, "We, I want this to be a horror movie. Like, I want it to be scary. Right. I don't want mm-hmm. it to be the original because that's not what it's about. I want it to be what the Evil Dead could have been if it was not a cult movie. If it was yeah. actually a, like by if the it, book, scary as hell right. movie. A horror movie. Yeah. And the fact that they made her like a fucking heroin addict, like, mm, yeah, <laughs> like you know she's going through withdrawal, so these people don't really understand what's happening to her because they think it's just withdrawal symptoms, but it's not. She was literally. I forgot that that, that was all mixed in there like that. Oh yeah, I haven't seen it in a while, but like they, they switched up some yeah, story they, up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
But, you know, I will tell you right now, one of my favorite scenes, the only scene in a movie that's ever really made me cringe to be like, this is the worst fucking thing ever, is when she she has her arm underneath the car and the demon uh the demon oh, comes yeah. out of the ground and she literally rips her fucking arm off yeah i was like oh shit yep it's going down yeah. i was like oh <laughs> you're, you're sitting there, you're watching the tendons rip and you're watching the bones snap and you're watching the vessels cr- like very very it was very graphic gruesome. and i loved it and i i applaud the director for that scene <laughs> oh yeah and for me it was a scene in that movie was the scene where she's in the shed and the oh, machete God. goes through the wall and oh. it hits her right in the up uh, above right the, the kneecap. Freaking patilla. Oh my God! Oh, yes. Ooh, I that, cringed. That reminded me of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. No, there was there was a lot of gore was in a, that movie. Yeah, dude, they well, used. I don't even know how many gallons of blood to fill the lot. final scenes, but there was a lot of blood. That was and a it was the kind. It was of raining blood. blood. It was the Slayer. kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, literally, but yeah. it was like it was the kind of blood that was heavy and had lacked the oxygen, so it was like the kind of blood coagulated. Was, yeah, co- yeah, exactly. But and it was all gross real. Gross blood. Yeah, it wasn't CGI <laughs> blood. It was like, yeah, but it was it was real. Blood. It was practical. It was a straight like beatdown fest. Yeah, like no, that movie no, was all, fucking great. That all movie, those actors went to hell filming that movie. Yeah, <laughs> like well, if you watch interviews on the making of that movie, they all look stressed as fuck. I could imagine. The, oh, yeah. yeah. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, um, you know, I usually do my dope-ass questions of the day. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to do them right now. Oh, shit. If that's cool. That's fine with me, man. Go ahead. S- speaking of the part that made you cringe. Oh, God. Um, well, you just kind of answered my question for this one. I wanted to ask you guys. Damn it. Out of all the uh, Evil Dead movies, out of the three, the remake, and the series so far, Ash vs. Evil Dead, what's been your favorite kill? Like what's been like the, the coolest, glorious? Now, okay, now you that's have, a good Mike, one. Mike, you have to change yours. Uh, no, I am. That's not a real kill, but I, I got okay, one. Don't right, worry, right. I got so one of mine. What's been your favorite gore kill? I don't mean out of. I mean, you have like four or five options here. We have fucking three. Yeah, four movies and fucking ten episodes. Can we yeah. count the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ash vs. Evil yeah. Dead. On there. Yeah, anything Evil Dead. What's been your favorite kill? Angel, from any of it. Angel, you can start it. Mm. I mean, oh, unless put you me on the spot here. You go, go to Pat. All right, all right. Okay, Pat. I have two. Okay. Go ahead. One, uh, in Evil Dead 2, when he cuts his hand off and kills his hand, mm-hmm. <laughs> that was classic, like, That's, yeah. old school, like, Three Stooges, like, gag, like, physical gags <laughs> going. It brought a little relief, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. That's and awesome. then right when it he shoots in the in the wall and then it just starts blurring out blood. <laughs> yeah, like, was It funny. was just fucking crazy. Yes. Um, and I guess... There's a lot of cool death scenes in Ash vs. Evil There's Dead. There's a lot of cool ones. There's a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Someone just walked up to the studio oh, window. Oh, shit. That was terrifying. <laughs> um, oh. I would say one of I would one of my favorite kill scenes um, is going to have to be when the uh, the demon possesses the black girl and the nurse from the Evil Dead, the remake. Okay. And mm-hmm. she's... F- no, oh, not only is she fucking putting the the, the mirror blade in her mouth, oh my she God. gets the fucking syringe from. I'm assuming her. Were they together? The no? her and the nerdy guy. Yeah. No, 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 no. They weren't. Okay. When she fucking gets on top of him and she puts the syringe needle in his eye over and over and over again. Oh, that was like, crazy. D- so I know that's not really a favorite? kill scene, but like he should have fucking died there because he should have yeah, died a it thousand all, it times. All counts, it all counts. But that was probably one of my favorite ones. And then I, I do have a second one. Um, it's from the Army of Darkness when he gets thrown into the... Uh, oh, when um, he gets the, thrown in the, whole, the, pit. In the will? Yeah, the will. the will. And there's that fucking thing down there. And he <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was one of my favorite kill scenes in that movie. Um, my favorite is actually from Ash vs. Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, first season, I think it's like episode four or five. Um, what's what's the main girl's name? Ray? No, what's her name? Oh, fucking. I know her real name. No, what is it? <laughs> fucking shit, Vic. Is it uh, not Victoria? It's not Victoria. It's fucking. Regardless, regardless. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come it. back I can't to it. That I don't know this. I literally okay. Um, she's all pissed off because the demons just possessed her, and then like her parents are dead, and like she's outwardly telling them like how she's mad like she's got you know she wants revenge on these yeah on these demons or the her name's kelly kelly, kelly that's what it is, it is. kelly and so they're in the uh they're in the diner oh my god i know it's yeah, in your yeah, describing yeah and so they're just and then so 
the deadites just take over like the waitress and the cook and like the uh, FBI agent and they all just start going crazy so Ash and all them start fighting back and she gets a hold of one of them in the kitchen and just starts putting her face through the meat grinder yeah Ooh. and that and yeah, she's that. going over like well first off she puts her face in it and starts hitting her in the head I think yeah with the yeah. it was like the meat tenderizer yeah mm-hmm. yeah and she just <laughs> starts grinding like. Like she's slicing meat, just, and like there's layers of this lady's and face. Blood just, just going everywhere. Blood's going everywhere. She's layering this chick's face, and it's I think one of the coolest scenes I've seen in any movie, like death scenes, because it's yeah. just like, like you know, when you first peel a layer off someone's face, they're not dead yet. So she's like, just like over oh, yeah. and over. Yeah, like, no, that was she I was loved slicing that her face. It was so sick. And she looks so sexy. With oh yeah, her. she's so mm-hmm. awesome. Like <laughs> she's awesome. I'm just gonna. She has a nice personality. I'll just yeah. Say that. Nice on screen. Angel, have you? Nice on were you able to think of yours? Um, actually, it's in the same scene. Oh my god! As, uh, I please tell me. I know which one this is probably gonna be. Yes, this, I, I feel like you do too. Um, because w- <laughs> it's like so brief, but the kid that comes out of the bathroom, <laughs> he yeah. gets he gets like thrown into like a steel fan. And yeah, just I forgot about that. Up. Yes. Completely, Dude, he like, gets like he's like a twelve-year-old kid. And Dude, he, he gets and fucking it was so like, It was so like random, like like you, you would expect this kid like gets away and like oh my god, there's demons, but no, this demon throws him into the fucking Dude, steel fan. The, elect- <laughs> the fucking electricity it zaps him and he's like swinging. That's- Dude, that was when so they did shocking. that, I was just like, damn, they just killed that kid. Yeah. That was awesome. Scene. Like wow, that was a really intense scene. But um, you got any more questions or is um, it- oh, oh yeah, yeah, I got I got some more. <laughs> Um, well, we kind of answered this too. We kind of went ahead of ourselves. On Shit, our always. Questions. But um, you know, we like to. Keep we like it to fun. reiterate. Well, Angel, Mike, and Patrick, for you listeners, never know my questions of the day. Never. So if they end up, he answering writes them, them before us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if they end up answering them, then I'm kind of screwed before I even <coughs> ask them. But I wanted, since we did talk about Poe, because I love Poe. Okay. Uh, we kind of said what your favorite story was, um, and why. Um, but Patrick, you said the Raven. Do you know why that's your favorite? You said it's because it's the only one I read. It's the only one you read. But can, you <laughs> tell, can you tell me something that you like about it, or you just like? I mean, it's what like, did you pull from it? Yeah, it's pretty dark. I mean, yeah, uh, I don't even really remember what happens in the Raven. I I read it back in high school. Oh, oh my lord! Yeah, no. Yeah. Yourself a junkie. So if I remember nope. off the top of my head correctly. The person in the story had killed someone, and they were underneath the yeah. the floorboards, and the raven kept tapping on the um, door. Yeah, on the door on the window. There's a raven tapping There's on the raven, door. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. So that's and the wow. police come and all that. Put Patrick on the spot. Mm. It's okay. We just got Pat for once. Hmm. Yeah, this that is never this happens. is weird. That never happens. <laughs> oh man, Mike. Um, you said yours was a telltale heart. Yeah, telltale heart. Um, you know, just because, you know, you get that sense of like. This person killed someone, and you don't know who it is because they never. Edgar Allan Poe doesn't name who the narrator is in the story. Right. So you have this person who's killed someone and is trying to defend their sanity. Mm-hmm. And I love it because when you're reading it, you're like, you're like trying to like you're battling. So like, oh my god, is this guy actually sane or is he insane? But then you're like, well, he killed this guy, so he has to be yeah, yeah. You, somewhat you start to feel for not him and you're sane. Like, Wait, hold on. Um. But that was one of my favorites. Uh, another one, I mean, you know, the Raven is always up there. Uh, just because, I mean, like that; those are like really long stories. They're not really his poems. Yeah. Uh, one of his p- more of a, like poetry that I really love is "Spirits of the Dead." Um, yeah, I read that one in school. And it's, I think. it's just talking about you know death in general, and I, I love Poe, and I love Poe's works, and I love. I mean, I have every single one of his works on my computer because I love reading his stories. All right. Well, I got one more question. Uh, real quick. Fuck Angel. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, Angel. Yeah, fuck Angel. <laughs> My bad. How are you good? How do we always do that? <laughs> Alright, so the question was like what's what, what stands you? out about the story? Well, yeah, well what's you? your favorite Poe story and like why or what do you like about that one story? Just because I mean like I like Poe. I would think we should do a whole episode on him since we can't. I wanted to ask more questions. Oh we we yeah. definitely can come back to him, don't worry. Yeah, well mine was a uh, cast of Montiato and I just thought the concept of um Montressor, like when he his objective is to take his revenge on Fortunato, so I thought it was pretty maniacal for him to keep feeding him wine and then take mm, him down to the drunk. and yeah. take him down to the catacombs and tell him there's more wine down there, but then ends up burying and, him alive. The, like, yeah, that's that, like that's cool. And the other thing is, it's um like his friend, like their friends. And he feels he's like, oh, well, you betrayed me. Like he like made fun of him or something dumb. I think, right? 
I don't remember what it was, but I think it's untold. But they actually knew yeah, each other. Yeah, I don't think they ever specified. Right, in the right, story. but it's something like they're friends, and like he did something that pissed him off. So then he like gets like the, the ultimate revenge, and it like it's like this dude's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and nobody's He's gonna bury this guy alive because he, you know, and nobody's aware because it, they're having like Mardi Gras. And yeah, it's like a Mardi Gras, like a party outside. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like that's a shitty way to end the night. Um, honestly, all right, I got one more question, real quick. All right. Um. So Sam Raimi. Yes, we all know who that is. The director of Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I read, uh, just looking up a little bit of facts about the Evil Dead, that to get investors um, to like gain interest in the movie, helping him make mm-hmm. Evil Dead, he directed a short film called Within the Woods. Within the Woods. Within the Woods. I never seen it. Nah, sorry. Um, but so I mean, I think that's pretty cool. When um, I mean, a lot of directors do this. They make short films to show people to say, hey. I want to make this to a full length. Like, do you like this? Whatever. And so they get people to invest. Do you guys know of any other directors? I can think of two that made short films that ended up making it on big screen that were actually, I mean, cause Sam Raimi made this little short film saying, Hey, can you give me some money? Cause I want to make a film and now it's this giant franchise. Like who would have ever thought? Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I can name one or two. Do you guys, I really I, can't think of anyone. I got, I got two. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's a really cool concept. Like I, well, I can say one right now is, uh, Saw. 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 Didn't see that one coming. Yeah, you didn't. Not, not for <laughs> me, right? But yeah, Saw was a short film. Well, they made a short film to show people. They needed money and they needed people to pick it up, like uh, production companies. So they made this short film and ended up making seven movies, like three video games. That's I mean, actually really a really cool idea. Yeah, you never I seen... actually, I never, no, no, no. I'm just talking about like, the idea of like making a short of your movie idea, like what you're wanting to do, to yeah. kind of show people like, hey, yeah. because... Anyone can read a script or read a synopsis or you when you, when you sit down with production companies, you, tell them, you try to explain to them what you're wanting to do. But like, it's so hard. To, it's, you it's, to, you want to see it. You got, yeah, like you want to visualize this. And sometimes people don't have the mindset to visualize a story. So I think that's actually really cool, the fact that some directors make shorts of their potential full-length movies to get a better uh, feed, get better feedback from right. the audience, from production studios. Well, the yeah, more, the and more, for the most part, the shorts are just like... They're the like m- not the money shot, but they're like the scene that you're like that's gonna hook that, you. That's gonna hook you. Yeah. Well, yeah. So like with the saw, it was the cage, uh, bear help, trap, the bear, the bear trap. trap. Oh, okay. Well, that was the short film yeah. was all about. Was, oh, sweet. And Lee Winnell, who was actually Adam, who got chained up in the bathroom. Yeah. And he's also the writer. He played. He was getting off work, got hit in the head or something, and woke up in the bear trap. And had that whole yeah, scene, he was the one yeah. in the bear trap in the yeah. short film. So it was like that's all they showed, and that ended up. You know, Taking off. Franchise. That's yeah. awesome. That's actually really. There's cool. two films that did that. Uh, Mama did that. Okay. Mm-hmm. They did a short, like little, little short and of it. Lights out. And lights out. Lights out. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. I, I get to watch them. Oh yeah. So for I mean, listeners out there, definitely yeah. If you haven't seen them, go and check those out because yeah. I'm going to. That's pretty I mean, cool. Which Rain. is probably what. Uh, that movie you mentioned earlier, Breach or whatever. The Birch. The Birch. The Birch. That's, That's probably what that is. Yeah, I'm gonna. I was gonna say that too. Yeah, that's a, yeah, know. maybe it is. When when you guys first brought that to my attention, and when I first came across it on social media, mm. I th- actually thought it was just a trailer for a full length film. I didn't know it was just a short film. Me too. So. And I watched <laughs> it like three times. Yeah, oh, yeah I liked it's good. It. I was like, dude, this is hmm. sick. It's got this dark sim- uh, s- s- uh, symbols in it. There's like this creature in the fucking woods that's gonna protect this kid because he's getting bullied. And I was just like, I want more. Dope. Yeah. Fun oh. fact: Evil Dead Two had some funds from Stephen King. Really? I love Stephen oh, King. Oh, yes. Ooh. I love Stephen King so much. Um, well, then that's, yeah. I mean, Sam Raimi, Within the Woods. You got Saul. You can find that short on YouTube. I've seen it a couple yep, times. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can find The you Lights Out. The Lights Out and The and Mama. Mama. Yeah, if so if you guys are trying to check some little cool, creepy little movies out, I mean, they're all probably like 10 minutes, but like, yeah. that's cool. There's fun mm-hmm. things, cool things to do to watch. tonight. You can, you can see these directors before they even directed this giant movie do something small, so it's pretty cool. And the budgets are real small, so it's like, you know, it's not. But it's special. effective. Yeah, nothing yeah. special to look at, but it's definitely effective. It's supposed to be a hook for sweet. Right, making right. a bigger that's, film. That's awesome. I'm actually I'm gonna check this out tonight. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. But um, that's it for this episode, guys. You know, it's been a long time. We've missed being in the studio and talking to each other. A lot of can I say? Austin has to say one more thing. All right, go ahead, dude. Everyone, check out M Night Shyamalan's trailer for the movie Split. It's yes. gonna be it's gonna be his best movie since Signs. It's gonna be the best movie of the year. One of the best oh, ones. I believe it. Year. All right. Uh is that is it on YouTube or is it on Blade? You can, it's on YouTube. you can find the trailer on YouTube. It's called Split. 
M. Night Shyamalan. He's making a comeback because the visit was good, and now he's making an even better sweet, one. Sweet, sweet. Before if, you go. Wait, wait. Can I? Okay, never mind. No, no. I'll watch we'll, it. We'll put I'll the trailer it. on Horror Junkies Podcast. I'll literally, yeah, I'll literally, we'll post the trailer tonight on uh, our website, HorrorJunkiesPodcast.com. And for those of you who are listening to the show on an uh, active basis, please, please review us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, whatever you're listening to us on. Um, that helps us keep uh, up in the charts and keeps the lights on. Keeps the lights on. Um, we love doing this and we want to keep producing shows for you guys. So and we love you guys. Yeah. We would definitely want to hear your feedback. So that's it. I'm Mike. Patrick. I'm Austin. And I am Angel. And that's it, guys. We're the Horror Junkies. And remember to always stay weird. weird. That was so corny. That was so fucking corny. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye, Farewell. everyone. Stay weird. <laughs>